Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I've been getting a lot of requests lately to do a what's in my camera bag um, video. So uh, a lot of you have been asking what kind of uh, what cameras do you use or, or specifically what lenses do you use. I kind of, when I put up photos online, I put like a little caption up as to what lenses I use and you probably see that I use a uh, Canon's quite a lot. Uh, that's my preferred choice of uh, camera. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Nikon or even Sony, but um, it's just personal preference because um, I like to also shoot a lot of video and I believe that Canon shoot better video. But um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, first of all, the bag I'm using, uh, this is my camera bag. This is one I use to take um, all over the world. Um, this takes most of my gear. I do have other little bags, but when I'm only want to take one camera and one lens, but no. For the most part, this is what I used to take with. This is called a Low Pro Flipside 400 AW. Um, I think I, it cost me about, it was quite expensive, it's about 70 pounds, but you could probably get it cheaper now because it's been out a while now, but um, that's how much I paid for it. Um, before I go inside, I'm just gonna take you through some, some of the features. So some, this bag here is waterproof, so you can pull this thing out. I say waterproof, like splash proof to an extent. But you can then fold that over the top of your bag and then that's a good rain cover. Rain cover, that's the word I was thinking of. It's a good rain cover, okay? Um, so, and around the side I've got business cards and I've got my little compact camera that I always take out with me. So I use a little compact camera, it's called the Sony RX100. And the reason why I love this little compact camera is because it's currently, I believe, the only uh, compact camera on the market that has a one inch size sensor, which is the same size sensor as Nikon's compact system camera, which is the Nikon J1. And obviously having that in a smaller camera is great, and it's got a, a Carl Zeiss lens, 20 megapixels, uh, 1.8 aperture, so and it's fully manual as well, and it's got a nice little ring there. So I love it, it's really easy for me to use, uh, it's a cool little manual compact camera, and it's amazing in low light. So that's my choice of compact camera. <coughs> Um, around the other side, um, I've got a few filters. This one is a neutral density filter. Um, it's a variable neutral density filter. If you don't know what that is, if you look closely here, you can see as I turn it, it gets darker and lighter. So I can control how much light is coming in through my lens at any time. I believe it goes up to uh, eight stops. You lose about eight stops of light at, at its darkest. Uh, I also use these. These are um, Hanel wireless uh, triggers. So I use that. sits on the top of my camera and this sits on my flash and then they talk to each other wirelessly and they can, my, when I hit the button then it flash goes off. I believe the range is up to a hundred meters so it's a really good radio trigger. So you don't have to rely on infrared because infrared it might not get to it or if it's behind something then it won't always reach it. So I don't trust infrared, um, I prefer to use these little triggers here so these are really really good. And they're not too expensive as well, you don't need to um, spend the big bucks on the bigger brands. Um, and my mind's completely blank now and I can't remember what the bigger brand names are but this company is called uh, Harnell and I think those two together cost about £50. Again, it's probably cheaper now because I bought these a um, few years ago. Uh, I bought an extra one of these so if I have two flashes, two flashes can fire off at the same time. Um, I have another filter. Um, this is a Kokin filter. It's called a Star 2 filter. And there's basically just, it looks like there's little scratches on it. And the effect that you get when you put this on your lens is the effect um, that you saw, probably saw recently in my last video, which you can see right here. I uh, did it in the Nick Howard video. So this is how you get that kind of anamorphic look with, uh, with, your, with the lenses. So if you've got a direct light pointing towards the lens, and you get that nice little flare effect, but if you want to create something a little bit more atmospheric, then this is the filter to go for. And as you can see, it creates that nice little um, anamorphic look and it spreads it out. Kind of like a Michael Bay thing that you see in a lot of Transformer movies. This is the kind of look you can get. So this is called, if you want to get one, a Kokin Star 2. But this is, uh, as I say, because it's a Kokin one, it has to go in its own holder 
and the holders look like that. So you have to buy a holder. It's not one that screws in, it's one that you have to buy, oops, you have to buy an adapter ring for it. So I use this a lot on my, um, my bigger lenses and they're a 77mm thread. So I put that on my 24105 lens or my 7200 which we'll see in a sec. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can get different types of star effects. You can get star 4, star 8 and that just means how many of these things, these anamorphic things that you're seeing. So I didn't want mine to actually look like a star, I just wanted to have that anamorphic look, um, but it's called star two because of the two. If I'd got four then it would have looked like a, a star, but I didn't want it to look like that. So, But if you want that, yeah, star two. Boom. So now we're going to go inside my camera bag. My baby, mine baby, me a baby. Okay, let's go inside. Okay. So, the way I have it laid out, so I haven't actually adjusted this since my last shoot, so it's a little bit of a mess, but that's basically what it looks like inside, if you can see that. But, I'll take everything out one by one. So first of all, I have a flash gun. I don't have the, the most expensive flash gun. I would like a better one, but at the moment I have the Canon Speedlight. 430EX Mark II. So it's a pretty good one. I've, you can get the 580, which has now been discontinued, um, but I actually I still think that's a really good flash. The one above it is the 600 one, which is ridiculously expensive. I don't think you need to spend that much on a flash gun, to be honest. So the one down from the 600 is now this one, but the one that was in the middle, was in the middle, is the 580EX. That's a really good flash. Um, even though it's been discontinued, it's still a really good flash gun, but at the moment I'm using a 430EX Mark II. So if you've ever seen any shots where I've photographed outdoors with flash, it's been with the 430EX. Um, and I put that in a, in a little softbox that I bought on Amazon, I think it was about £40. You can buy a special softbox which allows you to mount your flash gun to it. And then I just put that on a light stand. And then I use these things as well, so it fires wirelessly to a softbox, so I don't need to plug anything in, and it makes it very portable, very easy to carry around, so jobs are good. Okay, so the cameras I actually use, I use uh, the Canon 5D Mark II, and I actually use two of these, so I've got two of these in my camera bag here. I've got one with a battery grip and one without. When I'm shooting concerts, I usually have my telephoto lens on the one with the battery grip, um, only because the lens is heavier and if I'm doing a lot of portraits then it's nice to be able to, instead of doing that, I can come round here and hold it there. So because, just because of the weight. And the telephoto lens I use is a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 LIS Mark II. Um, this is a gorgeous lens. I know it's really expensive. It took me so long to save up for it. In fact, I actually got it on finance. It took me about a year to pay for it all completely, but yeah. It's a nice lens. I use this for when I'm shooting all my concerts. So that goes on my le one of my cameras and lives on there. It doesn't move. So, beautiful lens. Highly recommended. So that's what it looks like on the camera. It turns, it turns my camera into an absolute beast. And that's why I use the battery grip for this lens, because cause, just because it's so heavy. So I come, come around here and I can shoot and I can still photograph here. If I want to take landscapes, I can do that. I can come around here as well. Um, other lenses I use, uh, my absolute favourite lens in the world is this one. I use this all the time. It's kind of, I think this lens kind of defines my work and the style of my photography. This is a 16 to 35 f 2.8 L Mark II. So this is my ultra wide angle lens. So if you've seen any of those big wide shots, it's with this lens. So that goes on my smaller camera when I'm shooting concerts. And I just for concerts, I only use these two lenses. I only use my ultra wide and my super telephoto. I do realise that that means I've got a gap between 35 mm and 70 mm, so I don't really shoot anywhere in between. I have I have um, other lenses, but if I've only got two cameras, I'm only going to use two lenses because I don't want to change lenses halfway through the concert. It just makes it easier for me, and I can get everything I need to. I don't really need to use the 35 and 70. I don't really need to use anything in between that. I have a 50mm prime, which you'll see in a sec. If I have to use it, then I will use it. But for the most part, I even use 
uh, you, I even use this for uh, portraits as well. I know that that's not really a, a given that you would use a wide angle lens for a portrait, but if you use it correctly then it can be very effective. Obviously what you don't want to do is position someone's head in the corner of the frame when using this because it will make, make it almost bow and you'll get a... Um, well, you get barrel distortion when you're using any wide angle lens, even as expensive as this one, but you just got to know how to use it if you are using it for portraits. Another lens I have is the 100mm macro. This is the, uh, the f2.8 USM, which stands for ultrasonic motor. Uh, you can get the more expensive version, there's the 100mm um, LIS, in case you don't know what L means, it stands for luxury, which means it's the best optics that Canon have to offer. So you can get a better version than this, but I don't really do a lot of macro photography, so this is, it, this is perfectly fine for me. I don't use it that often um, either, so it made sense that I, I don't go for the more expensive one. But what I do use it for, um, I use it a lot at weddings, um, so if you're getting lots of detail shots and that's good for that. Um, you can even use it for portraits. It's actually a very, very good portrait lens. I've only used it a couple of times for portraits because I like to do a lot of my portrait stuff uh, with a more of a wider angle. Um, but, funny story, I actually bought this lens for one reason only and I was going to return it. I used to work for a company called Jessup's which is a photographic company and I I had in mind uh, a, a cool shot where I was going to have my camera on a tripod looking down into a 120 uh, film camera capturing uh, this shot here. So this is a picture of Nick Howard in the studio. Uh, I was going to return it the next day but the company went into administration and I wasn't able to return it so I was kind of stuck with it. And I was going to sell it but I thought I'll keep hold of it, I might make use of it and luckily now I do make use of it when I'm shooting weddings, if I'm doing details, that sort of thing. So if you are doing wedding photography and you want to get some more detailed shots, then definitely go with the macro lens if you can afford it. You can get cheaper ones. I believe there's a uh, an EFS 60mm macro. Obviously, you only put that on your crop sensors. Um, if you've got a full frame, then it won't fit. Uh, this, with Nikon users, I believe there's a 105mm macro lens. It's a little bit expensive. It is a good one, though, but I can't think off the top of my head if there are cheaper alternatives to... Uh, Nikon's 105mm if you are shooting Nikon's but um, have a look on the Jessup's website or if you're not from the UK or you um, then go on Amazon they're really good um, or if not drop a comment in the comments down below if you have a question if you have any questions at all by the way then just drop me a line um, and we can chat uh, another lens I have is the 50mm f1.4 this is a great portrait lens anyone wanting to get into portraits then get the get a 50 millimeter. Everyone should have a 50 millimeter in their bag. It's an awesome lens. Uh, if you are a Canon user, you could. There's three 50 millimeter lenses on the market to choose from. There's a 50 mil f 1.8, 1.4, or 1.2. 1.2 is stupid expensive. Um, me personally, I don't. I won't. I, I can't justify spending that much when the results I'm seeing on a 1.4 are. Uh, enough they're good enough for me 1.2 is amazing but it's slow at focusing very slow this is faster in fact the 1.8 is faster it's only like 100 pounds compared to i think it's like 1200 pounds it's ridiculously expensive for the 1.2 but if you are starting out i would totally recommend getting the 50 mil f 1.8 it's as i say it's about 100 pounds it's actually been nicknamed the nifty 50 because the quality you get out of a 50 millimeter lens is crazy for the, for the amount you're spending. For Nikon users, uh, the same thing, uh, you can get 50mm f1.8. Uh, there are two 1.8s uh, on the market though for Nikon, so you've got to make sure to buy the right one. One of them, the cheapest one, will not autofocus on the lens. So you need to make sure that you have a camera that, that auto focuses on the body. If you don't, and you buy a 50mm 1.8 that doesn't auto focus, then you will have to manually focus it. So if you do have an entry level Nikon, chances are it won't auto focus on the body, so you would need to spend a little bit more and buy the 50mm 1.8 that's that can also focus on the lens. Really confusing, I don't know why Nikon do that, um, but that's the way it goes. So if you are starting out, definitely get one of these, they're an awesome lens. Uh, the last lens in my bag is the 24-105 f4 
IS. I absolutely love this lens. This is the best all-rounder. I use this mainly for filming and when I'm in the studio. So if I'm in my studio, um, I'll use this lens because it's uh, got a great range um, and when I'm and when I'm filming, it's I, the IS is brilliant. Uh, the IS is image stabilization. Um, for Nikon's, it's called vibration reduction. But the image stabilization is so good when you're filming. Um, it really, really does help. I use I use it on all of my shoots. Sometimes I will film entire videos with just this lens um, because it's just amazing. Um, so yeah, if you are shooting video, um, I would totally recommend getting any lens with image stabilization. Um, if you are getting this one specifically, then be careful because the image stabilization motor is quite loud. So if you are going to use it, I would recommend using an external microphone or using another source to record your audio. If you're shooting a music video, then obviously it doesn't matter because you don't need to worry about sound, so that's fine. But yeah, the 24-105, I absolutely love this lens. Um, it's a little bit expensive, but it's really worth it. And that is everything inside my bag. I do have one more zip that I forgot, and it's right at the front here. So this is what I take out to portrait shoots as well. This is so cheap, and I would totally recommend you get one. It's a 5-in-1 uh, reflector. So as you can see, you can see that it gives a nice little bounce of light. And these things are so cheap. Look, you can see the effect it's having on, on my face right now. It's got a zip here. So inside, you can turn it to white. So you turn it inside, it could be white rather than silver. So why would you use white or silver? What's the difference? I would use white in direct sunlight because if you're using silver in direct sunlight, it could be a little bit harsh and your subject will probably go blind. Um, you've also got a gold side as well, so that's fairly obvious. It will just give you a kind of a warmer tone to your image. So if you are shooting in direct sunlight, then you can use this to put over the, um, over the sunlight and that's going to diffuse your light, making it look like a cloudy day, which to any photographer we know that that's a better day for us rather than shooting in direct sunlight. Um, so it's going to make the, the shadows more softer and it's just going to, look, it's going to look better. So always use one of these and they're so handy to use. So that's everything in my camera bag guys. If you want to ask me a question then you can tweet me at TommyReynolds89. If you haven't already done so then you can give me a cheeky little like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Tommy Reynolds Photography. And if you want to check out my brand new website go to TommyReynolds.co.uk where I've got a brand new shop section featuring brand new stuff in there as well. And if you buy a print then you can get a free Tommy Reynolds Photography wristband. Join the club. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers guys, bye!